Well, hey, everybody, and welcome to Practical Church Planning, where in 15 minutes or less, we'll give you practical tips, advice, and encouragement to help you plant and grow healthy churches. My name is Brian Androsian. Joining me today is Dylan Dodson. And joining me today is Brian Androsian. Yep. And today we're talking about parkers, specifically why you should have people in your parking lot from day one. So here's the thing. We want to give you practical reasons why tips, advice, encouragement today about why you should have people in your parking lot from day one. Now, you may be thinking we're a new ch church or we're going to plant a church and as a new church, why would we need people in the parking lot? It's not like we're going to have a million people. Right. Everyone's going to be able to park. They're going to be fine. Well, we want to give you a couple reasons why that is not what you should do and why you should have parkers. Number one, not in any particular order, but number one is that it creates energy. Yep. So we're going to talk about this a lot in future episodes we've talked about in the past. But Sunday morning is the first step. A lot, they're going to they're going to connect with you online first, but to actually show up, they're going to show up on a Sunday morning service or a weekend service before they show up in a group or something like that. So you want to create you want to create energy. You want it to be fun. You want people to want to come back. And so to have people in the parking lot already shows, hey, we're excited to be here. It just creates energy. It's welcoming. It's fun. Number two, it shows that you're prepared and that you're expecting people to show up. And this one is really really important because again, you say, well, we don't need people in the parking lot. Everyone knows where they should go. But it shows, hey, I'm actually prepared for you to come, and I actually expect for people to come. I think that's a big deal. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, you might be saying, and I was going to ask you this in a minute, but like, I could deal, I could do all this with signs, you know? Right. Like, like our space at New City, if you haven't been here, it'd be very easy for us just to put signs out, and it's very simple to figure out where to park. So really, parkers aren't out there for information. Correct. But they're out there to create energy and for people to know that we're actually expecting them to show right. up. Right. Because again, signs just like, well, if you if you're coming, sure, go follow this route. But yeah. it's just not. It's not personable. It's not fun, and it's that's kind of what people expect. Yep. Which leads us to number three, that it is unexpected for non-church goers. So I think what happens a lot of times is we kind of, especially if you go to churches, contemporary churches, it's not rare to see people in the parking lot. But for people that have never been to church before, what do people a lot of expect? Really traditional, yeah, conservative, uh, you know, maybe uptight, not a lot of fun. Like so, they don't expect anyone to be there in the parking lot. It's it's very unexpected. And it's like, oh, wow, they actually want me to be there. Uh, and so that's important because, again, when you're going to a church for the first time, especially if you're not a Christian, maybe you haven't been to church your whole life, you're thinking of all these reasons about why you should go home, why you shouldn't be here. why. And so to see someone in the parking lot having fun, waving, telling you, you know, go this way, it shows that you're expected. And it's like, oh, man, I didn't think that was coming. So I'm already intrigued about what might happen. Right. And then number four is it makes people feel welcomed right away. And this is really, really big. We've talked about this in the past, and we'll get your thoughts on it too. Uh, the goal is not to have a big, massive church. I mean, God, there's great big churches, large churches, small churches, medium-sized churches. But one of the trends that you will find between most, you know, between most uh, churches that are growing, it's not theological, distinctive, or philosophical, or practical, or worship style because they're all different. What you'll find is that they have a they place a high value on the guest experience. Now, why would that lead to growing churches? It would lead to growing because, if again, if you're going to a church and you don't know what to expect, but you feel welcomed and loved and cared for, you're much more likely to go back and then hopefully get connected. Yep. And so to have people in the parking lot from the very beginning says, hey, we expect you, we're prepared for you, and we want you to feel welcomed. Because here's the thing, too. Even if you, it's not a big parking lot, let's say, and you could know where to park. You've never been to church before. You might think there's rules. You know, you might think maybe certain people park. You, don't, you just don't know anything. Yeah. And so it automatically takes away any questions about where to, what to do or where to go and i think it just makes it a lot it alleviates a lot of fears where again if you're in the church world you're like it's not scary to go to church but if we're trying to reach people who have no experience with this we want to make it as easy and accessible as possible yeah i think for a non-church goer specifically um feeling welcome or or i guess the fear of not being welcome is probably the biggest fear when it comes to coming to church i don't think i don't think a huge fear is whether they're going to preach something that i disagree with or something like that right. because you can internalize that that's not a big deal but Am I going to feel welcome? Am I going to feel out of place because I don't know where to go? All these questions is what go is going through someone's head. And so just something as simple as having someone out there to point. Right. It's, it's a really simple solution to what could be a huge problem. And here's the thing. If you're starting a new church, what do you need? More volunteers. Right. You need more people to serve. And so it could be hard to be like, well, if I have to have someone out there, then I can't have someone in here. And I would say it is one of the most important things you could do. Now, we've been going for a little over a year now, and so we're, we've, we're, we've got set schedules and we're good. But in the beginning, we didn't always have enough people. Yep. But we have always, every single week, had people in the parking lot. So you might be wondering, how many? Well, here's the thing. It depends on your space to make it practical for us here at New City Church. We're located, our facility is within you know a little office park, and we're on the back end of it. So if you were to drive into our space, again, we have signs that tells you to go, pretty much you go straight between these two buildings and turn right. You don't even need a person there. 
Right. But again, we have people for the reasons that we discussed. And so we have two people. We have someone right at the very entrance of our parking lot. And then once you turn right, you know, once you go behind the building, you have someone else actually directing you where to go. Um, and so I would just say, even having one person is better than nothing. Yep. So having one person, like let's say you have you have someone entering your parking lot and then you have people directing traffic. I would I would say, I mean, where, wherever you put the person, one is better than none. It's not like you need to have someone every 10 feet. Again, you're not running, you're not running thousands of cars. It's not that big a deal. And again, it's not about what you need in terms of, is it like, do I need this to park cars? Yeah. You don't, but you do need it if you want to create an environment that's more welcoming. So I would say even one is better than none. Yeah, and I'd say especially especially if you're in a space that's set a little bit back from the road or that you can't see the front door from the road because it turns or something like that, having someone at the road, I think is the most important place yeah. for them to be. Like in our in our space, you can't see the entrance from the road. So if someone's coming in, there's not someone at the actually turning in point. It looks like we have signs and stuff like that. And signs are fine, but it looks like there's nothing going on because right. even if we have a packed house, you can't see it from the road. So just for someone to be able to see like, Oh, I'm here at the right time because there's someone out here. Right. Church is going on. You know, I'm not showing up at the wrong time or showing up when no one's here or after it starts or something right. like that. I think yeah, it's that, you, you right said a lot of entrance. great things. Again, that something's happening, especially if you're a new small church, you might have you're not gonna have tons of people and tons of cars. Yeah. So someone could show up fifteen minutes early, ten minutes early, as a lot of new people do, and think there's nothing going on, I'm in the wrong place. So having someone there already says, Oh wait, this is right. And I like what you said too about you could just have signs. But think of it, like think of going to the airport or somewhere or that, where there's plenty of signs to tell you where to go. <laughs> right. But if you've never been there, you're still worried, like, am I going the right way? Like, I think the science says. And so, like, you could just put out signs, and they could be not hard to, to follow, but st still people are going to be concerned internally, if, am I going the right way? Yep. Especially if there's no one outside when they get there. Totally. Um, and, and, again, I like, I like what you said about that. It's, it's just important to create a welcoming environment that, that you're here, that we expect you, and having people out there really welcomes people from the beginning. Yeah, absolutely. And there's one thing I want to touch on, which we'll get, I think we'll get into more detail on this on a, in a future episode, but I think we have to at least touch on it, is the the people that you put out there, kind of the attitude that they have. I think a lot of times parking is kind of a place where a lot of guys default to because you don't necessarily, you don't, it, you don't have to shake hands. You don't have to like be as nice. It feels you're just waving or pointing and stuff like that. But I think that that's really wrong, you know, that, that, we, that we allow that to happen. I think that especially... If you have someone at the road, that's the first point someone's going to see. Whoever's out there, they got to be someone energetic. You know, I don't mean like they have to be young or they have to look a certain way or anything like that, but they got to be smiling. They need to be waving and excited yep. because if the first person that someone sees <laughs> is someone that's just kind of, you know, pointing, waving, you know, not really doing much, it totally brings down the mood, it totally gets them, or doesn't get them excited for church at all. It just looks like this is a pretty boring right, place to be. Which leads to another point of you need to have fun with it. Yeah. So like, a, I think one thing's practical to have a vest so people actually know this person's supposed to be here. But like at New City, we have like Mickey Mouse hands yep. or we have a sign that one of them holds. But like allow them to have fun, allow people to laugh, especially if they have kids in the car. They'll love that. The people might feel a little cheesy. But hey, it's about welcoming people, making people having fun. And so you want people in the parking lot to also be energetic and having fun. And it's a good, it's, this is really important for church planners because you're probably, most people are meeting in a school, a community center, a place that's maybe not necessarily visible right from the street yeah and so you want to have people out there that can help make this an easy experience a stress-free experience and a fun experience yeah and i like what you said about how get, giving someone something to hold is an easy way to kind of combat this just standing still because if you just say go up there and wave it is awkward and it's yeah, totally. uncomfortable just to wave and you don't really know if they're supposed to wave back and all this stuff but if you give someone a just a simple as a sign to hold like how we have it is we have directional signs that are you know put in the ground right outside of our space and so we just pulled one up and handed it to somebody. It would, wasn't like this. It's not this fancy sign. It's literally the same signs that are right in the road. But having something to hold and being able to wave and stuff like that, it gives them something to do with their hands. So it's more comfortable. Yep. And people like seeing it. I mean, I've been up there doing it. And people even driving by will honk and stuff like that. It brings energy up there, even if you're not a super energetic right. person. It goes back to having fun. So yeah. and it could be a directional sign. It could be a sign with words like we're so glad you're here. Yeah, absolutely. Mickey Mouse hand. Have fun with it. And also leads to the next point. Another point that's really important is that this helps you sell the vision because people will ask, your people will ask, why do we have people in the parking lot? We don't need it. Yeah. And so this is, and people asked us when we started. And and I think it's important when we, people ask us questions, they're not being mean or they're not saying, like they just, they want to know. And so to use this opportunity to say, hey, again, we want to help people meet Jesus, grow in a relationship with him, whatever your mission statement is, something has to do with the Great Commission. They say, hey, this is why we do this. It makes people feel welcome. It shows that we're expecting non-Christians, non we're expecting first-time people 
And when you share this to them, it'll actually actually help them get excited and see the vision. And it'll probably make them more energetic in the parking lot because they know that the reason that they're out there is not to point cars, it's to create a welcoming and a loving experience from the moment people pull onto your space. Totally. And at the end of the day, people want to feel welcome. People, I think we said this before, people don't get welcomed in places. You know, most places that a non-church goer goes, whether it's restaurants or just stores or things like that, people aren't going out of their way to make them feel welcome. Yep. And so experiencing that here in church, even if it's something as simple as a parker waving to them and smiling, goes, it you know, makes a big difference. Yeah. So again, have people in your parking lot from day one. You could be like, well, I've already launched. Have people in the parking lot this Sunday. Yeah. I guarantee you it will be, it will go well for you and it will go even better for the first time guests. Right. Uh, so thanks for listening. As always, you can go to practicalplanting.com and submit questions if you want us to cover our particular topic. And until next time, we'll see you later on Practical Church Planning. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Practical Church Planning, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube or Practical Planning, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, make sure you like or subscribe or do whatever it's telling you to do or should do on that platform. And hey, if you are so tired of looking at our ugly faces, but you're not tired of listening to our beautiful voices, mm. then you can find our podcast. If you just search Practical Church Planning on iTunes or Google Play, make sure not to just find it, not just to listen, but to subscribe. Make sure you subscribe. Brian, tell them to subscribe. Subscribe. See you next time.